please. Allow me to show you something. Welcome to another episode of One Great Hand, a series that brings you moments of brilliance, inspiration, cunning deduction, or just simple hilarity from the world of top-level competition. This time, we feature Ben Norton, who was part of the England team in the recent 2022 Bermuda Bowl. Hi, Ben. Uh, Thanks very much for coming along to tell us about a hand today, um, which I gather was from the European Championships recently. Yeah. Hi, Sue. Pleasure to pleasure to be here. Yes, we're playing in the um, European National Team Championships. It was um, fairly late on in the event. Uh, Unfortunately, the England team didn't qualify, but it was some things didn't go our way. And sometimes we just didn't play that well. Um, but the, at least this match was, was a good win. It was about 16 4, I think, one of our, one of our better results in the competition. Uh, we were playing Spain, who an experienced team, they didn't do particularly well this time. Um, but there was one where I mean, the, um, let's just say it was one of these where the bidding, got a bit out of control. We didn't get to a particularly good contract, but it was one where we needed a lot of the cards to be well placed, a favourable lead. So it's it's one of these we might see in, you know, Bridge with a Blue Team book or something where they bid very optimistically, the layout's there and then you have to take advantage of it. Um, so should we have a look at the bidding to start with? Um, sure. Yes. Talk, talk me through the auction. So my my partner, Mike Bell, passed. I opened um, Tuno Trump 2021. Um, quite a good hand in the context. I had good controls, uh, four four three two shape, but probably not worth an upgrade. Um, Mike bids Stamen next. We just play normal four card Stamen. Um, he was intending we play smaller after that. So had I bid three diamonds to deny a four card major, he would have bid three hearts to show four hearts and longer spades yeah. to force him. Um, but. As it was, I bid three hearts. So now he had a decision to make. He could just raise the game. He needed quite a lot for Sam to be any good. But he thought that opposite some hands with either just the ace of clubs or no wastage in clubs, we might just about have a slam. So he bid three spades, the other major, to agree hearts. And show a slam try, yeah. Slam try, yeah. Um, you know, the, the theory being that uh, if you just had four spades, then you'd make some bid in no trump or some other bids. Um, and if you just had five spades, then you'd have started with a transfer. So it's a bid which can't really be used for anything sure. else. Um, over that, I bid three no trump to ask him more about what he had. Didn't show anything in particular. And now he bid four clubs, which either showed a proper slam try with no shortage or a sort of mild slam try with a shortage. Okay. Was at the time we didn't have a mechanism to find out what that shortage was if he had the mild slam try version, which we've rectified now. But so at the time, if I'd been able to ask and if I'd find out that he had a singleton club, I wouldn't have been interested in slam with the club holding that I had, King Queen X, not very appropriate. Uh, top top loser in clubs and these wasted cards wouldn't produce many tricks necessarily. Um, and you'd but, have missed out on this great, great result. <laughs> Yeah, indeed. Yes. Good indeed. system, bad result. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, so I thought in the context of a 2021 Tuno Trump opening, I had plenty good trumps, plenty of controls. So I thought I'd just I'd just blast a slam, given that I couldn't find out what I wanted to. Know. So I I asked for key cards. Um, Mike showed his his one. I did I did six hearts. Okay. So now my my poor screen mates. Well, generally, when you've got a key card. And a king queen sequence on lead to a small slam, you'd always need the king queen sequence. Mm, of course. Like when cashing your trick. But here it was almost the only card in his hand to let the game to let the slam through the king of spades. Very unlucky for him. Um so I, I saw this dummy, this dummy coming down, and I needed to get I have a, a spade loser to come and a club loser on top. So I needed to get dummy singleton club away. Um and that could only happen, that could only go on the fourth diamond. Um, and I had to draw trumps along the way. So I needed trumps 3-2 because I just couldn't handle a 4-1 split. Mm-hmm. And I needed to cash this fourth diamond. And then, even after after all of that had happened, I had to establish dummy spades as well. I still had words. Mm-hmm. So 
I started by, I won the ace of spades and I drew three rounds of trumps. And now I had to get to the diamonds. In isolation, the best play with this uh, combination is to play ace and then one to the queen, catering for a 3-3 three, three break or jack doubleton in either hand. But I couldn't, I didn't have the entries to cater for that layout here, the extra chance of jack doubleton offside. Yeah. And even doubleton onside, I couldn't cater for by playing ace and one to the queen because I wouldn't then be able to unblock the 10 of diamonds and get to my hand quickly enough to take the discard on the fourth diamond. So I had to sort of improvise a bit and finesse for 10 of diamonds on the first round to unblock the suit. Hair raising finesse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily that held. And then I cashed the queen of diamonds, played a diamond to the ace, king of diamonds, throwing a club. And all the while, um, East had thrown uh, two clubs, one on the one on the third heart and one on the fourth diamond. So now I played a spade up and East played low. I put the jack on because I knew that he had the queen of spades. And then when West followed, I played another spade off the dummy and West discarded this time. So East had queen 10 of spades remaining. And I had two options now. I could either rough it and play the king of clubs and discard a spade from dummy. And West would have to win that. And because he only had clubs left, have to resurrect the queen of clubs in my hand for my 12th trip. Or I could discard on the spade, which would work when East had both the ace of clubs and his remaining spade. So you've, got, a, a you've got to win, play either East or West in this situation and decide which, yeah. Yes, indeed. Mm. Yeah. Um, a, a couple of things to go on as to who had the ace of clubs, I thought. But, I mean, for a start, West had discarded a discouraging club on the fourth round. That's, that's generally not much to go on in slam. They just discard any card. So, um, the bigger thing really was that East had, if he had just low clubs, if he didn't have the ace, then he'd have risen with the queen of spades on the second round and played a club, and then I wouldn't have been able to do anything because I still wouldn't be entries to establish the spades. I'd just have to discard from them. There was also another thing that when I led this spade off dummy, um, my screenmate East sort of motioned as if to say it, it doesn't doesn't really matter. He thought it didn't matter. He thought I was going off. And how, how could he know that? He could only know that if he had the ace of club. But a bit of, bit of table feel as well. I, I just started on a spade. East won and he had to either play a spade to let me rough dummy's fifth card good or he could play a club and effectively let me take a roughing finesse. So he had to end play to give me an extra entry. He played the, the jack of clubs as it was. I let that run around to my hand and then cross rough for the last two tricks. So his uh, casual shrug, his confidence that you were going off helped you not to. <laughs> yes, indeed. I, I could have misinterpreted what he was doing, but it felt, it felt to me that's, that was mm. what was going on. Poor guy. <laughs> I could, instead of taking the first round diamond finesse, I could have drawn only two rounds of trumps and then played ace of diamonds, diamond to the queen, because if the jack had dropped and the hand with jack x diamond only had two trumps, now I could unlock the ten of diamonds and play over. But it would it's an extra risk, but they might they might rough the ten of diamonds on the third round. So I think playing one to the ten was just about the percentage play, but yes, it was... Uh, so you've had a, an exciting time since you graduated from the ranks of the juniors. Um, playing in the Bermuda Bowl, how was that experience well, for you? That, that was excellent. Um, like nothing I'd ever played in before, the level, uh, just yeah. everyone, uh, very elite. It's It was a very cramped schedule. You almost sometimes playing 60 boards a day, sometimes two sets, sometimes three sets. Some people are playing four sets every day. So it's, it's an awful lot of bridge. Um, you've got to... Your stamina has to be very good. Your mindset has to be, you've got to be really in the game, stay focused. It was great, great to play, to play again, to see so many great players, you know, people the you read. Best. Oh. Yeah, yeah, fantastic, I would imagine. I'll have to imagine because I don't think I'm getting there anytime soon. <laughs> do you do stuff to uh, improve your physical fitness and stamina to, for occasions like that where a lot is asked of you? Uh, well, I, I just try to, I, I play quite a lot in general. So I think that, that help, that's the main, the main aid to stamina is to just play a lot and then to work out in yourself how, how you can keep yourself going, whether it be, I mean, I, I don't do this, but some people eat a little during, during play to keep their energy mm. level. I just find through experience that you try to not think about previous hands. It's, it's all about the psychology for me mm. to not, 
very yeah, important. Going to mm. just clear your mind. It's, I think that's that's what really helps. So you've had, as you say, a lot of practice. You've been playing since you were quite young, uh, learned at school, I understand. Um, so I was just wondering whether uh, in talking to other juniors when you were on the junior circuit, did you get the impression that other countries are better or worse than the UK at encouraging the game at school level? Um, I I got the impression that some countries like the, the Netherlands, I think because they've got some extra funding involved as well, um, they've got a very strong junior programme and a, a lot, I'd say, more juniors than England have. Um, in terms of promoting the game at the school level, I'm, I'm not quite sure. In, here in England, it, it really depends on which teachers are at said school. Mm. It, it's got someone who's um, who's interested in bridge and who's dedicated enough to give their own time, then they can potentially flourish. They can have lots of young people interested in that sort of thing. But if uh, if you're at a school where there's, there isn't a teacher who's interested in bridge, then it's it's very difficult because you'd have to create not only might you no one no one's there to spur you on, but you'd have to create a club yourself. Yeah, yeah, and you may it's, never even get to hear about the game as a, a child yes. unless you have family who play. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I mean, personally, I, I was very lucky at, when I went to uh, Loughborough Grammar School, and it, we didn't really have any sort of formal classroom style bridge teaching. What we did was. We just learned from baptism of fire. We just got there to the table and played cards and kept kept playing and le- learned from mistakes. Um, spoke through the hands afterwards. Um, I had two two teachers, Mel Starkings, who used to used to coach for junior teams himself, wow. and Duncan Happer as well, who has been, who, yeah, who has has been involved in a lot of high level competitive bridge in England. Um, more recently, his um, his family life has come to the foreground a bit more, but he's still still a fine player. So yeah, that was it was great to have those two those two figures helping me along. Mm, very lucky, very good. Indeed. Yeah. So um, just to wind up, Ben, uh, as with all the people I am going to interview on this series, I'm just going to ask you if you have a, a funny story for us or something strange or amusing that's happened to you at the table. Yeah. So uh, there was something very strange which happened. It was in, in a competition I was playing in um, in Leicestershire. Um, some people have been speaking about it. Um, the auction started a week no trump, and the next hand made a penalty double. And the advancer, the, the partner of the no trump opening, didn't see this double, I believe. They bid two diamonds, intending this as a transfer to hearts, but most people play some sort of run-out mechanism where this would show diamonds in a major in the case of the... Um, other players involved. And that went pass and the one no trump opening, the one no trump opening bidder passed. He was he was happy with diamonds. Um and then this the doubler could, you know, had the chance to pass out two diamonds now if he wanted. But a strange thing happened in that he didn't get the chance because the next player corrected themselves and jumped to three hearts. Oh. Be- before, before the du- before. the doubler yes. got to put a card on the table. In- indeed, yes. A bidding yes. card. So, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's quite, quite extraordinary. Fun and for the director. <laughs> yes, yes. The, the, the director was called. And apparently the rules suggest that the next player to act, which in this case is the, no, the doubler, the hand mm-hmm. over the foot part bidder, um, apparently it's their choice as to whether to accept or decline, which seems quite odd to me given that the, the double of themselves had the option to just pass out two diamonds and forget any of this nonsense. They didn't. They didn't get a chance. How how can that be right when they? Mm. You know, and the partner of a double generally has less information. But the partner of a double did accept the three hard call. The opening bidder now had a very, very interesting call to make. What what <laughs> what what was going on? He he passed and three hearts made ten tricks. So they lost a swing on the board anyway. But it, it seemed quite extraordinary. I've never seen someone. I'm not. I'm not saying they're necessarily wanting to take advantage of unauthorized information by um, the two diamond bid being alerted as yeah. diamonds in another rather than showing hearts. But they certainly tried to correct their mistake in a very emphatic way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the ruling does seem strange. The, I mean, yes, obviously, yes. I've never seen that happen at the table, but that it does seem a curious action on the part of the director to to make that. 
possible. Yeah, yeah, anyway, absolutely, yes. I, yeah. I think I would have been quite distressed if I was the doubler. <laughs> but yes. I yes. play two dimes. Can we just play in two diamonds? <laughs> It was their fault for not passing out two diamonds quickly enough. They just they passed <laughs> Maybe the no one told him there was a time limit yes. <laughs> of like yes. half a second. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, good story, Ben. Thank you. Um, okay, so uh, that was a really nice hand. I saw that only uh, two other pairs out of the entire field found their way to six hearts. So slightly dodgy or otherwise, that was a great yeah. result. And <laughs> well done. And Thank many, you. many thanks for coming and telling us about it. Thank that was you. my pleasure. Thank you. A delightful save from a slightly dubious auction there. Something we all need from time to time. Big thanks to Ben and a quick reminder to support our work at www.patreon.com forward slash NT Bridge. See you next time. Mm-hmm.